welcome you all in this our lecture series program this is our lecture 22nd we are going to talk about phonetics and uh, within the topic we are going to learn classification of a speech sounds this content is from an introduction to linguistics semester one this topic is very important for the students of ma english bs english and equally crucial for the aspirants of uh, lecturership in english so let's talk about our today's topic phonetics as uh, our concern here today is classification of speech sounds and uh, speech sounds are classified into number one consonants and within the consonants we are going to learn about voiced and voiceless sounds and uh, number two places of articulation and number three manners of articulation so these are some of the areas we are going to discuss in consonant sounds and number two we are going to talk about vowels within the vowels we are going to learn vowel sounds and number two diphthongs so let's talk about our today's topic and that is uh, the classification of speech sounds there are two types of sounds number one consonants and uh, number two vowel sounds so consonant sounds what are the consonant sounds a speech sound where the air stream from the lungs is either completely blocked stopped or uh, partially blocked so this is the simple definition of consonant sounds as we already have talked about and within the consonant sounds we are going to learn voiced and uh, voiceless sounds number b places of articulation and number c manners of articulation and uh, here uh, when we are talking about the uh, consonant sounds number a we are going to learn voiced and voiceless sounds so consonant sounds are always divided into voiced and voiceless sounds so voiced sounds in which the vocal folds can vibrate during the articulation for example the sound z r v are uh, when we are talking about voiceless sounds sounds in which the vocal folds could not produce vibration during the airstream for example the sounds s r f and this is very simple when we are talking about uh, the distinction can be felt physically if you place a fingertip gently on the top of your adam's apple you could feel the difference or make distinction between the uh, voiced and voiceless sounds here we are going to talk about uh, places of articulation where in the mouth constriction is taking place constriction means the process of compression so where uh, the sounds occur actually so these are the places of articulation as you see this part is called uh, larynx so these uh, are the vocal cords which is a narrow passage to the uh, the the place which is called um, pharynx and this is the dangly um, part is called uvula this soft uh, palate of upper roof of the mouth which is called velum this hard palate is called um, palate and this is actually the nasal cavity and uh, if we are talking about here so this uh, the upper uh, teeth gum which is called alveolar ridge this is the tongue so these are actually the uh, places of articulation or places where sounds occur that once the air passage um, uh, passed through the larynx it enters uh, the vocal tract this vocal cords the narrow passage which is called vocal tract and comes up via the um, pharynx an extended tube shape about 5 inches 13 centimeters long it is then pushed out uh, through the mouth the oral tract 
uh, and or the n n uh, the nasal tract so this is actually uh, how and uh, where uh, the sounds uh, are taking place uh, or we could say these are the places of articulation let's talk about one by one um, the uh, places of articulation here number one that we are uh, going to talk about bilabial sounds bilabial sounds uh, are produced where the leaves are brought together for example p which is voiceless uh, and uh, in p uh, as in p or b and m which are voiced as in b and me so as you see bilabial articulation p b m uh, p is a uh, voiceless and b and m are uh, voiced as we already have uh, talked about that the consonant sounds are divided into voiced and uh, voiceless sounds so uh, when the lips uh, come together and we pronounce um, the sounds are called bilabial sounds here number two when we are talking about uh, labiodental sounds uh, so labiodental sounds are made when the lower lip is raised towards the upper front teeth. For example, uh, our f as in safe, this is voiceless and uh, uh, w in safe, which is uh, voiced. So here you see labiodental sounds as v and f. Again, these are divided into voiceless and voiced sounds. And uh, this uh, occurrence of sound is called labiodental sound number three we are going to talk about and that is dental sound dental sounds are produced uh, by touching the upper front teeth with the tip of uh, the tongue of uh, this here you could see the upper uh, uh, ridge of the teeth with the uh, tip of the tongue as uh, th in oath and the voiceless and uh, the in clothes as this is voiced as the and the these are called dental fricative sounds or dental sounds uh, number four we are going to talk about that is uh, alveolar sounds alveolar sounds are made by raising the tip of the tongue towards the ridge you see tip of the tongue touches to the ridge of the upper teeth that is right behind the upper front teeth called the alveolar ridge examples as are T, S, in, tu, and su, both voiceless, and uh, D, Z, N, L, R, in, do, zu, nuk, luk, ruk, all voiced. So these sounds are, are uh, where the sounds are taking place, uh, which is called alveolar sounds as T, S, D, Z, N, L, and R. So here we are going to talk about uh, um, palatal sounds and this is number five. Palatal sounds are very similar to uh, palato alveolar ones. They are just produced further back towards the velum. The only palatal sound in English is uh, je, as in yes, yellow, beauty, new, and it is voiced. So palatal sound as je, uh, as in yes, yellow, and this is uh, the occurrence of sound. You see, sounds are very similar to uh, palato alveolar ones. They are just produced further back towards the velum. When we're touching, uh, our, our tongue touches to the velum. So this is number five, and here we are going to talk about number six, and that is velar sounds. So velar sounds are made by raising the back of uh, the tongue towards the soft palate you see this it touches to this part called velum examples k back k in back this is voiceless and uh, uh, j n both voiced as in big and bang v is a velar sound uh, which is uh, accompanied uh, with the tip round rounding so this is as you see willer articulation uh, 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 so this is all uh, we are going to talk about as um, the willer sounds are taking place from uh, this place 
uh, of our uh, places of articulation. So this is uh, uh, all about and uh, we are going to talk about number seven that is glottal sounds as glottal sounds are produced uh, when the air passes through the glottis as it is narrowed her as in high. So this is the narrow passage. These are the places of articulation and the narrow passage which is called glottal. A narrow passage uh, um, in the vocal cords, right? So this is called glottal sound. Uh, as you see, uh, the narrow uh, passage from the vocal cords, uh, which is called glottal, and the sounds produced from here are called glottal sounds, and uh, ha in English, as in high, that is the glottal sound. Um, here we are going to talk about uh, places of articulation as a whole. You see, bilabial sounds we already have talked about, labiodentals, dentals, alveolars, palatals, and uh, velar glottals. And these are the voiced uh, consonant sounds are divided into voiced sounds and uh, uh, voiceless sounds and voiced sounds. We already have talked about the definitions you could uh, uh, watch uh, previously uh, into our same uh, video lecture. You see, these are the places of articulation means uh, how bilabial uh, is uh, produced as both uh, lips joined together and labiodental as upper teeth with lower lip and dental as tongue tip behind upper teeth and uh, alveolar tongue tip to alveolar ridge and uh, palatal sounds uh, tongue and palate and again when we are talking about uh, velars the back of tongue and velum and uh, glottal sounds are the space between vocal folds. This was all about, we talked about the places of articulation. Let's talk about uh, uh, the manners of articulation. So what are the manners of articulation? Uh, basically how articulation is made differently is called manners of articulation. Uh, in uh, the places of articulations, we were talking about where sounds occur. But in uh, manners of articulations, we are concerned with the um, uh, the manners of articulation, how sounds are produced. So here are uh, some of the manners which are called uh, Stov's manners, fricatives, uh, affricatives, uh, are affricates, nasal sounds, uh, liquids, and uh, glids. As you see, stop sounds, uh, uh, as these are the uh, uh, consonant sounds, so again are divided into voiceless and voice sounds. So stop sounds are those uh, manners of articulation. As you see, block airflow, let it go abruptly. When we are talking about fricatives, fricatives uh, almost block airflow, let it escape through a narrow gap so these are are such sounds are called fricatives again when we are talking about uh, affricates uh, sounds uh, combine a brief stop with a fricate okay uh, so here again nasal sounds uh, uh, lower the velum uh, let air flow out through nose so the sounds uh, uh, which uh, are coming out from nose are called nasal sounds, uh, liquids, uh, rays and the curled tongue let airflow escape around the sides as we see in la, ra. Uh, okay, so these are called liquids, uh, uh, manners of articulation, glids when we are talking about. So these are the glid sounds, move tongue to or from a vowel. When we are talking about manners of articulation or places of articulation, one thing which is to be kept in our minds that when we are appearing in our examinations, because this is for those students who are appearing in their masses or BS level, they are supposed to face the uh, MCQs uh, are the uh, objective type questions. Uh, they may be asked what are the stops or sounds. So these are the brief and shorter definitions you may um, uh, come up uh, with. Uh, like these are here given for all of you. 
again when we are talking about uh, the manners and uh, the places of articulation here is another chart uh, which is very essential uh, for all of you to know right and uh, this chart is uh, a brief description of uh, manners of articulation places of articulation with the wise and voiceless sounds of consonants so this is a complete study of consonant sound you see um, these are called the um, places of articulation and here these are divided into um, the manners of articulations and again um, uh, wise and voiceless sounds V minus means uh, the voiceless and V plus means voiced sounds. Okay, so these are again divided these sounds all in just one chart. Here we are going to talk about vowel sounds. Vowel sounds are produced with a relatively free flow of air when our mouth is open. They are all typically voiced when we are talking about vowel sounds so all the vowel sounds are typically voiced when we were talking about the uh, consonant sounds those were uh, divided into voiced and voiceless sounds so here the case is different to talk about a place of articulation we think of the space inside the mouth as having a front versus a back and a high versus a low area and uh, thus in the pronunciation of the heat and hit we talk about high front vowels because uh, the sound is made with the front part of tongue in a raised position again in contrast the vowel sound in hit is pronounced with the tongue in a lower position and the sound in heart can be described as a low uh, back vowel as it is described uh, in this picture you see when we are talking about heat and hit so this um, E, uh, here you could see uh, that is pronounced at the uh, higher position and uh, at the very uh, front position of the mouth. And these are the uh, vowel sounds and their positions uh, where they are uh, produced or where they are articulated into the mouth. You see, this is uh, the higher position, this is central position, and this is the uh, lower position. And when we are talking about this way, uh, this is the front position, again, this is the central, and this is the back position. And uh, there are these vowel sounds, those are produced from uh, the uh, front and high position. Some of the um, vowel sounds are produced from the center side of the mouth, and some uh, from the back side of the mouth. So this depends upon uh, the uh, sounds of the vowels used uh, in different words. As uh, when we are talking about the sound hat, it's produced with the tongue in a lower position and the back uh, in heart can be described as low back. As you see, the uh, sound uh, right? So it is produced like uh, from a low back, yes this is all about um, when we are talking about uh, the study of uh, these all words in a chart it is like front as we already have talked about in the mouth this is this was the position how they were uh, kept as uh, from front this is central and back position and uh, uh, um, by this way it was high mid and low and when we are talking about, for example, this uh, symbol as a vowel in uh, bead, beef, and key, and me means e. This e sound is uh, uh, it is to be written like this, and this is from high and front position. Okay, and bid i as this is produced from again a uh, high mid and front position. But when we are talking about, you see, uh, but blood dove means uh, a sound so you see this is produced from middle and central position so central vowels and these are the uh, back vowels and how these are used in these words so you could uh, uh, just read out and you could make yourself ease with these all words again when we are talking about um, uh, the vowel sounds 
there are diphthongs in vowel sounds in addition to single vowel sounds we regularly create sounds that consist of a combination of two vowel sounds known as diphthongs so when we were talking about the vowel sounds those were uh, we were calling single vowel sounds but when we are talking about the diphthong sounds these are the combination of two vowel sounds uh, are called diphthongs uh, when we produce diphthongs our vocal organs move from one um, vocalic uh, position uh, to another as um, this as we produce the sound as uh, in high or by right i so the movement in this uh, diphthong is from low towards high front position it is like this when we are talking about by i and i my so this you see a sound and uh, uh, this i uh, as it uh, goes from this position to that position and this combination is uh, known as diphthong as in this and these words are uh, when we're talking about bot uh, doubt or cow how these uh, diphthongs are used and uh, how this position from this to that it goes our tongue are the position of the mouth goes from central to back uh, a side of the mouth so this is the way how we are pronouncing um, the diphthongs uh, while we are talking about the vowels. And the uh, diphthongs uh, in a very simple way are, we could say this is a simple definition, we call it as it is the combination of two vowel sounds. And this is again another chart, how these symbols uh, are used and these are the eight diphthongs in English, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, out of uh, uh, 20 vowels, eight uh, are the diphthongs within the vowel sounds. So this is all about when we are talking about the uh, classification of uh, speech sounds. Here you see the references uh, from where we have uh, uh, deducted our notes and uh, we collected the material before you. And those were the uh, from uh, the study of language, uh, sixth edition, fourth edition by George Yule, and number two English uh, phonetics and phonology by Peter Roach. This is uh, one of the very uh, recommended, uh, strongly recommended books for the students of uh, MA and BS uh, English. And uh, here images and definitions uh, from Google.com we have uh, adopted. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.